here's the next uh, topic uh, on electromagnetism and uh, it's on magnetic fields and magnetic forces uh, so these are the good topic uh, on this slide uh, so we're gonna first define the magnetic field just like electric field magnetic field due to currents uh, which is going to be our main topic uh, for discussion and magnetic field due to straight lines coils etc and finally force on charges and current uh, due to magnetic fields and after doing this topic you should be able to answer this actually what causes this uh, northern lights which is aurora you know uh, what causes uh, this dancing beautiful lights and uh, uh, called northern lights you know you should be able to answer that question uh, so uh, just the classical magnetism, you know, discovering the magnetism. Uh, magnet always points uh, in north, uh, geographical north and south direction. So, and there's a reason for that, and why is that actually? And people used to um, use this idea, you know, using a compass needle, you know, which is a tiny magnet to for navigation for a long period of time, you know, because magnet always points north and south direction, you know, and there's a reason for that we will be talking about that uh, so define your magnetic field so magnetic field is just like electric field if you have a magnet you have magnetic fields around it right um, and how do you detect it uh, so you you're going to need a compass needle so this is a tiny compass needle uh, this is just like a test charge uh, equivalent in electric field you know so you you have a tiny uh, needle compass needle and you just place it around it and then just uh, it will point in certain it will always point in the direction of the magnetic field so direction of the magnetic field is in the direction that the north pole of the compass needle points right so this is the north pole of the compass needle so the magnetic that means the magnetic field here due to this um due to this magnet is in this direction right and its unit is b so the magnetic field symbol is B and its unit is Tesla from in the from the name of a uh, great scientist you know, Nikola Tesla and uh, uh, just like electric field magnetic field also uh, behave similarly it decreases with distance uh, so here's an example of how you map out uh, the magnetic field around a bar magnet it's pretty it's pretty easy actually you just place a bar magnet on a piece of paper and then you just move the compass needle around it and just um, make the dots wherever it goes and then you, know, you join the dots you know and then it's gonna be a magnetic field around a bar magnet and this is how it looks like the magnetic field you know around a bar magnet looks something like that uh, you know uh, so it's very non-linear as you can see and it always goes from north to south pole okay. the magnetic field uh, by definition, you know, always goes from north to south pole, just like from positive to negative charges. This is the actual, actually, uh, field mapping uh, of the uh, magnetic field using iron filings, iron dust. So you just put iron dust around the magnet, you know, right, and just um, give it a little uh, vibration, and then after some time, it settles down in the direction of the field, and you can clearly see the iron filings settling down in the direction of the field like, like this right so that's the field around it and here are some more examples so uh, if, if you have a north and south poles you know placed together this is going to be the field around it and if you have a north pole and north pole you know uh, they repel each other and this is the field around it actually and these are some so first question is checking understanding at what point you know at point a one right in which direction will the compass point so again the compass needle is just like a, a test charge you know it, it always points in the direction of the field uh, so the answer is um, this b right because why because the magnetic field here is at point a is that direction because it goes like this right it goes like uh, you know not exactly like this uh, but it, it goes like this right it goes like that since it goes like that so at this particular point it's just tangent so same thing at point two what is the direction of the compass needle and then you same thing you just uh, you just try to complete the magnetic field pattern and at this point since it goes from north to side it should point in this direction so that should be the magnetic field uh, in you know in this direction so uh, a is the answer right 
And these are some examples. So, so magnetic fields are used everywhere in everyday life. So this is a refrigerator magnet. Actually, it's a combination of many magnetic strips and also the old style, you know, the rotating uh, external, uh, internal uh, drive, you know, internal storage drive, hard drive also has the magnet. It stores information in terms of magnetic field, zero and one, you know, magnetic field storage, uh, you know. And Earth is also a giant. Earth has a weak magnetic field, and that's uh, you know, and that's a great thing for you know because that's the second line of defense for planet Earth, um, you know. And uh, Earth has its own magnetic um, poles, you know. It's a giant magnet, uh, though it's weak. Uh, so Earth North Pole actually lies in the geographical South, and Earth's uh, South uh, magnet, Earth's magnet South Pole lies in the geographical North. That's the reason, actually, that's the reason why uh, any magnet, uh, if you suspend, uh, you know, freely, it always points in the direction of the um, north and south, actually, because it was just pointing, you know, it was just mapping Earth's magnetic field. That's why. And the next, which is the most important part, you know, will be, um, you know, dealing with magnetic electromagnets mostly, not the classical magnetism like this. Our most of our discussion will be mainly on. Uh, magnetic field due to current, you know, magnetic field pro produced by current, okay, um, not the classical magnetism, and it's the magnetic field produced by current carrying wires. So if you pass current, so uh, that wire produces magnetic field around it. So this is a, um, these are the actual examples, actually, so it's long straight wire produces a circular pattern, circular, you know, as you can see, you know, circular magnetic field, right? And this is a single loop, uh, will produce a magnetic field, something like that. You know, this is the magnetic field pattern around a circular loop. And this is, if you have many, many loops, it's also called solenoid. The magnetic, you can clearly see the magnetic field pattern, something like that. You know, these are the magnetic field patterns on various current shapes. And there's a rule actually. Okay, so how do you find the direction of the magnetic field, you know, due to the current? And it's called actually a right hand thumb rule. Okay, this is the first. Um, so you you'll see actually many rules in when you deal with magnetic uh, force, you know, magnetic field topic in this. So the very first rule is it's called right hand thumb rule. So uh, so first, using your right hand, right, uh, your thumb shows the direction of the current. Your thumb shows the direction of the current. Your finger shows the direction of the magnetic field. That's the rule. Okay. So here an example, right? This is the current. Now, what's the magnetic field? The magnetic field around that wire will be uh, counterclockwise, right? Uh, so, if the, uh, however, if the current is downward, the magnetic field will be, you know, clockwise, like this, if you just use that rule, right? And here's an example. So, one more thing here. So, if you have this, this, this example, you know, uh, if you have a wire in this side view, top view, right? If you, if the wire is carrying current, Right in this direction, let's say. Right? Uh, how do you how do you find the direction of the magnetic field uh, from this top view? So then use the same right hand rule. Uh, so your uh, thumb, this is the thumb, right? Uh, thumb uh, should be the direction of the current, and your um, fingers uh, uh, fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. But uh, this will be now into the page, right? In this side, it will be into the page if you point your thumbs. And obviously, if this is into the page, uh, this will be out of the page. And these are the symbols we'll be using into the page and out of the page. Okay. If it is into the page, you use this symbol. If it is out of the page, this you use this symbol, right? Because uh, otherwise, you can't draw the vector, right? Because it's, a, it's going to be a 3D picture. You can draw out of the page and into the page, okay? And obviously, uh, if the current is carrying that way, I do the same rule again. The magnetic field will be out of the page in this side and obviously into the page this side because it has to complete the circle. So uh, now back to the math. So how do you find the magnetic field due to a current, a straight, long straight wire current? And this is the formula. And we wouldn't need to derive this formula. This formula is derived by our important law called Byte and Savard. Uh, but we'll just be using. So this is the magnetic field due to a long uh, straight wire. Okay, uh, long straight wire. So mu naught is a constant. 
this is always a constant it's a fundamental constant this unit is tesla meter per ampere 4 pi 10 to the power negative 7 i is the current 2 pi r is the distance from the center of the wire okay uh, so that's how you find the uh, magnetic field due to a straight line and as you can see, the magnetic field decreases with the distance r. And I'm going to show you some example problems, you know. So here's just to check and understand. So if the this um, uh, straight wire, long straight wire is carrying current to the positive x direction, what's the direction of the magnetic field at point P? Point P is um, just, it says point P is 5 centimeter above the wire. It's a three-dimensional picture again. Uh, so then you have to do like this. So since the current is carrying that way, right? So it's, it's going to be a circle like that is kind of difficult. And using your right hand thumb rule, uh, and this is vertically above. So magnetic field here will be this. So that's your answer. So think about that. So next is um, the magnetic field due to a loop current. Uh, so we just talked about the magnetic field due to a long straight wire. Now, how do you find the magnetic field due to a loop current? Uh, so, for example, magnetic, uh, the uh, if the current is in a circular loop. So this is the side view. So you have a circular loop ring, right? And it's carrying current in this direction. Uh, this is the current, you know. Uh, and uh, so how do you find the magnetic field? So then, again, use the right hand rule. So your thumb is the direction of the current and your fingers show the magnetic field. So these dots. So here's the magnetic field within within the circle, right? The, the magnetic field is out of the page and uh, magnetic field is into the page, uh, in, you know, outside the, outside the, into the page, this is out of the page, right? Uh, and this is the top view actually, right? And they're still same but it's just a different view. So this is the current, the loop, loop is, the, the current is, this dot represents the current coming out of the pace, current going into the pace here, right? The loop is like this. So the, this is how the magnetic field look like actually from the top view actually. So this is, this line, solid lines are the magnetic field around a loop. So what's the rule? So the, the easiest rule uh, you still use, you can still use the right hand thumb rule where thumb shows the direction of the uh, current and fingers show the direction of the magnetic field like right? uh, so then just to uh, just to you know you remember this very quickly if our loop is carrying current counterclockwise current the magnetic field will be out of the pins okay this is the side view okay and if the loop is current clockwise current the magnetic field will be into the page or downward okay that's how you remember that's the easiest way to remember here's a quick summary Here's a quick summary of the magnetic fields due to different current, you know. So first one is the magnetic field due to a uh, uh, long straight wire uh, at distance R. This is the magnetic field due to a uh, loop, current loop at the center, you know, given by this. And here's the final one is the magnetic field due to a solenoid. Solenoid is just a spring-like coil, something like that. So at the center or inside the... Uh, solenoid the magnetic field is given by this the magnetic field inside the coil is uniform which is a constant as you can see given by this formula welcome to another unisurf physics vodcast today we'll be exploring the magnetic fields of simple coils using three magnetic field demonstrations and visualizing a two-dimensional slice through each configuration each demonstration has a hollow square acrylic plate that has been filled with a clear, light, low viscosity oil and a small amount of iron powder. So we can see here these dark bits. Mounted through each plate are coils of enameled insulated copper wire arranged in three different types of configurations. We will shake up the oil and evenly disperse the iron powder, then connect the coils to a low voltage power supply approximately 2 volts and a current of about 5 amps will flow. The iron powder will align itself with the magnetic field lines, allowing us to visualize the otherwise invisible magnetic field. So we'll just connect the alligator clips to the posts. That's actually connected to a little Morse code tapping key, which when I press it, current flows and that's just sitting off to the side 
and I think we'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what's happening and I'll probably do and we'll start the current flowing now I just press it down for a short period of time just a few seconds because we've got around 5 amps flowing and this copper wire is fairly thin and it warms up pretty quickly so just a few seconds each time I press down the Morse code tapper key okay so we can see something happened there we're starting to get the iron powder start to form circles around that wire just the coil of copper wire there's about 15 turns on this I'll connect up the terminals okay I'll probably zoom in a little closer on this one and we'll press the Morse code tap a key and see what happens here we go oh wow Just remember what this one looks like. It was a set of five coils and each one of these has about 15 turns on it. Now it's a little bit dark so I've got a, a light source on the side here. I'll just bring it in a little bit closer. So it brings up the contrast. And we'll connect the power supply to the terminals. And okay, we'll press the Morse tapper key and see what happens. Okay, so we can see the down the center here we've got the iron powder lining up and it's curving at the edges. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. I'll just move the demonstration around so we can have a look at what's happening. So we can see some detail there. We can see that the it's curving right around this end. And then as it goes along the coils, it seems to go in and out. Right along the edge there. And at the other end, we're still getting a bit of looping around the edge here, but it's not joining up. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. And the next one, which is the very important part is, now magnetic field uh, exhausts force on moving charge. <clears throat> okay, magnetic field exhausts force on moving charge, only on moving charge. If the charge is at rest, magnetic field doesn't exert any force. Okay. Uh, and so here, and uh, <clears throat> here's how you find actually the magnetic, so here's an example. If the charge is at rest, the force will be zero, right? And also, if um, uh, the charge is moving in the direction of the magnetic field, right, like this, force is again will be zero. But however, if uh, the charge is moving uh, at some angle with the magnetic field, uh, then there will be some force, and the force will be uh, perpendicular to both uh, plane containing both magnetic field and the velocity. Okay, that's how it behaves. And it's from the math and uh, from the experiment. And uh, the magnetic force on a charged particle, you know, depends on uh, various things. Uh, so first, it depends on the velocity, depends on the magnetic field, strength of the magnetic field, and also the angle between magnetic field and the velocity. Uh, so the force would be maximum, right? Force would be maximum for given velocity and for given magnetic field. The force on the charged particle will be maximum uh, for 90 degree angle. If the magnetic field makes angle 90 degree with the velocity, the force will be max maximum. And remember, this force will be always perpendicular to the plane containing both magnetic field and velocity. That's how it behaves.
Okay, slightly different from electric field, uh, electric force direction. And there's a rule actually. It's called right hand curl rule. So you might have done in you know cross product uh, if you have done you know dot and cross product in vectors uh, at some point. It's the same rule. It's called right hand cross product rule. Right hand is called right hand curl rule. So how do you find? First you have to using your right hand. Okay, again right hand. Uh, so using your right hand first point your fingers towards the velocity so the charge is moving let's say the charge is the positive charge this rule is for positive charge so if the charge is moving that way you have to first point your fingers right towards the velocity and then you have to curl you have to curl your fingers towards the magnetic field right uh, it may be 90 degree or it may be angle some theta and the and this is your answer this is your answer the thumb is your answer thumb is the direction of the force Okay, so try of your own and its magnitude is given by this formula. Okay, the direction is given by right hand curl rule, right, like that, I just told you. And uh, its magnitude is given by this formula. So the charge times V, velocity times magnetic field times R. So Q, V, B, sin theta is the, the magnetic force, okay, formula for magnetic force. And this is the symbol for a curl, if you remember from cross product. And here are some examples that uh, you know so for example i'm just going to show you this example so use your right hand uh, rule to figure out the direction of the force on this positive charge so charge is moving this way right this is the velocity and magnetic field here this is the magnetic field magnetic field is into the pins so use your right hand rule so thumb, you, know, you have to first point your fingers towards the velocity and then you have to curl or bend your fingers towards the magnetic field which is into the pins so that means force is that way this is the force so try this is the magnetic force right but however if it is a negative force so for example i'm going to give you the same example with the same situation if a negative charge is moving the magnetic field is in into the page again right then the force will be obviously right you have to flip the fingers and the force will be obviously opposite because it has negative charge for negative charge just opposite rule Right. first find the force for positive charge and then uh, just opposite you know flip the direction of the force that's it if it were a negative charge the force will be downward right so here uh, this is the motion of a charged particle in magnetic field so if you send a charged particle in magnetic field you know it uh, it makes a circular path it always makes a circular path a circular arc or um, circular radius of curvature right it may or may not complete the circle but it makes a you know it makes a you know, circular arc and what's the reason and reason is this because the magnetic force right this is the magnetic force this is the maximum magnetic force works as centripetal force radial force right and that's the reason actually it makes a circular path at any point actually in the given point in the circle the this magnetic force is always towards the center right when it gets here uh, the forces towards the center so, so forces always towards the center that's why it makes a, a circular path and this is the relation actually the magnetic force works as centripetal or radial force and you can figure out the radius of the this circular uh, circular radius actually the radius of curvature of the circle by just by using this formula and this formula is derived from this right and here's some examples actually we we can show the actual demo in the lab actually so here is called fine beam tube it generates some electrons right and the magnetic field right here is either out of the page or into the page let's say into the page this is the magnetic field which is provided by this uh, this coil this is a it's called m holes coil it produces a magnetic field depending on the current direction either into the page or out of, out of the page and this is the electron right it's the electron beam is the velocity and it you can clearly see it's uh, it's making a circular Path. It's the actual direction of the current. It's filled with some helium gas to make it visible. But the, <clears throat> whatever you see, this circular is the actual um, beam of electrons. And uh, that's the cause of aurora. This northern light, northern light or aurora, beautiful aurora, is um, caused by the same thing actually. Because Earth has its own magnetic field, and when sun uh, sends a stream of charged particles, it's basically bent. Um, uh, in is uh, been due to the earth's magnetic field because earth magnetic field as you know that just force on charged particle emitted by sun you know and that's the reason we will see this beautiful 
uh, northern lights you know and this is basically actually all the charged particles are sucked in into the northern pole you know or southern pole and that's we see as uh, northern lights and the application of magnetic field is so uh, you can is in mass spectrometer you know you might have heard about mass spectrometer so it sends a um, stream of mixed particles you know um, uh, after ionization in a magnetic field and depending on the mass you know it, it makes different path um, because because our formula is you know uh, if you go back and check the formula mass times velocity divided by qb right so mass times velocity by magnitude of charge um, b depending on the mass right depending on the mass it makes different radius and you can separate the mass isotopes different isotopes and that's why it is called mass spectrometer you can separate the isotopes of different ions you know different elements using the mass spectrometer and this is our main formula and this is how it works actually the mass spectrometer um, and so you can read that actually so first it follows a series of steps so here's a uh, simple example um, conceptual example so in mass spectrometer you send a mixed particle you know after ionization in a mass spectrometer and the magnetic field is into the page uh, so which it says which one has the least um, mass and greatest mass right and from again this formula this is our main for mass times velocity divided by q uh, b right uh, for if velocity charge and the magnetic field are constant r is proportional to the mass right greater the radius greater the mass right uh, so this must have the mass greatest mass right mass at d right a must be greater uh, greatest and mass of uh, compared to mass at a right because of this relation and it has many exam examples i can give you the particle accelerator you know which is used in fundamental particle physics you know particle accelerators use magnetic field to accelerate the speed of the charged particles and there's some more problems i can i will do later so the next is magnetic just like magnetic field exhaust force on charged particle magnetic uh, field exhaust force on currents obviously because current is just the flow of charge so obviously uh, magnetic field exhaust force on current and the formula is given by this this is the formula for magnetic force on current just like charge so and we use exactly same use exactly same um, rule right and curl rule right you just need to now do uh, you point your fingers uh, towards the current this is your fingers right and using uh, using right hand rule right uh, fingers uh, so first point your fingers towards the uh, current in term, in, instead of charge now you have to point your fingers towards the current because current is just the rate of flow of charge and then you have to curl your fingers towards the magnetic field right curl your fingers towards the magnetic field this is the magnetic field and the thumb is the direction of the magnetic force so this is your answer so this is the thumb is the direction of the magnetic so try that and its magnitude is given by this i l b sine alpha or theta I is the current, L is the length of the conductor or wire, B is the magnetic field, alpha is the angle between, uh, you know, current and uh, the magnetic field. And so the speaker cone vibrates because um, because of the magnetic force on the coil action, basically. <clears throat> because when you apply the audio signal, the signal generates the oscillating field, and oscillating field actually, um, you know, uh, exerts oscillating force on the given coil. And it vibrates because based on the signal and then you can hear the music and uh, now next is force between currents so if you have uh, you know a current like this on um, say parallel current right current in the same direction they attract okay and you can try that i will sh separately show you in our next uh, you know uh, video you know as a sample problems and if two conductors, two currents are carrying actually currents in opposite direction, anti-parallel current, they repel each other. Okay, and you can prove it by drawing the magnetic force on each wire, uh, and this uh, ex explain in my separate video. And the force on each other, right, is given by this formula. 
Okay. Yeah, some example. So uh, this coils, you know, this um, coils, you know, if you have two rings uh, carrying current in the same direction, they will attract because, uh, as I just uh, explained, actually, this is this is a parallel current, and but however, if they are they are carrying anti-parallel current, they will repel. Right. And the next is uh, magnetic field exhaust torque on current loop, right? Obviously, because so is um, so here's the coil, let's say a rectangular coil, right? Rectangular coil in magnetic field. Magnetic field is in direct, this direction, right? This is the magnetic field. And uh, so uh, you can clearly see, right? On each side, actually, it uh, exhausts equivalent opposite force, and that generates the, that generates uh, the torque because equivalent opposite force generates the torque and that torque is given by you can prove it actually the torque is given by this actually i a b sin theta sin theta theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the orientation of the coil see the, this is the orientation of the coil right the, the the orientation of the coil is given is actually the area vector which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper plane of the um, coil and it depends on the torque on the given coil depends on the angle between magnetic field and the area vector the area of the coil right, like that if the magnetic field is parallel you know to the coil right coils orientation like this then torque will be zero there is no torque right uh, when it does that so here's an example that i will show you later and the application of this torque is electric motor right here's the electric motor coil is basically electric motor is just basically a loop of coil loop current you know placed in magnetic field magnetic field is produced by uh, uh, permanent magnetic poles and here's the animation actually you can clearly see right uh, because it exhausts since magnetic field exhausts force and uh, force and torque eventually torque on the loop and because of torque it rotates right and uh, the uh, other important applications of magnetic fields are magnetic resonance imaging uh, i'm not going to go in detail of this